Hello, welcome to my last short talk on stopping smoking. This is the one that's going to get really interesting because you're probably wondering when I'm going to start talking about different ways to stop, which is best and so on. And that is what I am going to do. I'm going to just run you through the different methods there are out there. And first of all, which one's best? Um, sadly, I'm not going to be able to tell you that because each person is individual. You will have particular issues with smoking. You've picked up some of that probably from my previous talks and you should never just look for what's best. You should be looking for what's right for you. Now let's dispose of a couple of uh, things. First of all, drugs to stop smoking. This is the NHS drugs, nicotine replacement products and the psychotropic drugs that they prescribe, the uh, Zyban and Shampix. Um, if you want to take drugs to stop smoking, you do need to go and see your GP. If you feel that taking nicotine is, is a valid thing to do to stop, fine. Um, go and see the GP, go and see the pharmacist. If you want to call a helpline, the NHS Smokers Helpline is uh, available. Um, they know all about the products because they're sponsored by the manufacturers, by the drug companies. So, of course, they're, they're completely trained in um, talking to you about those products. Um, before I come on to other things, um, you may have seen recently something called an electronic cigarette. There is in fact no such thing as an electronic cigarette. It's a misnomer, it's an electric cigarette. There's nothing electronic about the device at all. It's electric because what it does, it takes nicotine, heats it up with the battery so that you get nicotine without having to smoke a cigarette, but it's in the form of a cigarette. So it's another nicotine replacement product, but because it's not licensed as a smoking cessation drug, it's therefore not legal to sell it. As far as I'm aware, God, I hope I'm not wrong. Uh, it's, it's, it simply isn't legal to say to people you're selling it to, um, use this and stop smoking. What it's being sold for properly is to enable people to smoke in non-smoking environments, to get a fix in non-smoking environments. So I don't need to say more about the electric cigarette. Now coming on to real stop smoking methods without drugs, the one that a lot of people ask us about, probably the majority, is hypnotherapy. How does hypnotherapy work? Well, you are addicted to nicotine, as you know, that addiction has created psychological dependence, as you know. That means you believe in smoking, you think it helps with stress, you believe that the habit can't be overcome, all that sort of thing that, that I've told you isn't true. But that's what psychological dependence means. A good hypnotherapist has the function of getting you into a nice relaxed state, not asleep, always in control, but a nice relaxed state, so that he or she can then make contact directly with your subconscious mind and remove from that the wrong ideas, put into it the right ideas, that addiction or no, you actually don't need to smoke. When it's good, it's very, very good. Never do it if you don't feel it's right for you. You'll be wasting your money. Um, what does it cost? Extremely variable. Most hypnotherapists will work either in one session or two. Some will say a session with a follow-up if needed. The cost is likely to be anywhere from say £80 a session to £250. Um, some people do charge a lot more than that. There are some outrageous fees out there. If you phone a hypnotherapist and they ask you for anything more than £250, and that needs to be in London frankly, um, then just laugh in their face and tell them Robert Brynin told you to, okay? Now, uh, the next thing, Alan Carr. Um, Alan Carr's Easy Way, it's called, it's a franchise all around the country based on the books that Alan Carr wrote. Uh, in this, you'll sit in a group, uh, quite a large group usually, where um, one of the people, that say it's a franchise, so a franchisee stands there and talks to you um, pretty well what's in the Alan Carr books and um, at the end of it you've stopped smoking. I'm not going to comment on whether it's good, bad or indifferent. The cost is, I understand, £220 um, if it's, you're in a group. If you want to be seen on your own, that can be done for £900, I'm told. So that's, that's the easy way. Um, then we come to acupuncture. 
Uh, this is perhaps not a very well understood treatment for smoking, but very, very good. Uh, and what happens here, instead of like with the hypnotherapy, where the hypnotherapist is saying, this is something I'm going to deal with through your mind, the acupuncturist is saying, well, you're addicted, so let's help you to overcome the addiction so that your body isn't demanding cigarette smoke, so your mind can deal with the other issues. Um, that's very good. Um, Cost-wise, you would normally need between two and four sessions of acupuncture, both classical, which is needles in various parts of your body, a lot of it's in the wrist, uh, face, the ears, um, plus what we call auricular acupuncture, which is a little stud that gets taped onto your ear on an acupuncture point so that you go home and over those first few days you can just touch it, give yourself a treatment and uh, then it's ongoing. And really, acupuncture for smoking should always include that. Two to four sessions, anywhere from 30 to 60 pounds per treatment does vary. I have to add here, acupuncture on its own is limited for smoking. We in the Institute provide acupuncture, but we don't do it on its own. We always do it, as with all of our programs, with intensive counselling and support from our help desk for life, because Acupuncture doesn't have enough, doesn't have any psychological component and therefore you really should be doing it as part of a programme, not on its own. Finally, there is the Phoenix programme, the programme I'm not allowed to tell you about, but the programme that uses the nutrogen that Dr. Macken has developed. This, as I have said in an earlier video, is not currently available other than in Brighton and Hove. But we really hope that we're going to be able to launch this nationally during 2010. So if you feel that that level of treatment is appropriate for you, have a look at the website, give us a call, and one of us will explain how it works and whether it's available for you. Finally, there is just one thing I haven't told you about, which you may have forgotten about, but you might not, and you'll hold me to account, and that's tomatoes. I mentioned it right at the beginning. Now, if someone is selling you a treatment, method, therapy, drug, whatever, to stop smoking, and they're not telling you about tomatoes, I use it as an example, but actually it's a, such an important one, then to be honest, they probably don't know what they're talking about. The tomato plant, I'm going to explain this to you now, the tomato plant and the tobacco plant are related. They're both nightshade family, as in deadly nightshade. If you're a Latin scholar, Solanaceae. Now, what does this mean? It means that when you stop smoking, your receptors for nicotine are looking for certain chemical information. They can find it from a cigarette, they can find it from a nicotine replacement product. They can also, in some people, find it from tomato. Not because a tomato looks like a cigarette, I completely accept that, but because on the molecular level, a molecule of tomato can resemble a molecule of tobacco. And when you're craving, your receptors can look at a molecule of tomato and think, hmm, this could be tobacco and it could satisfy them. I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, I'll eat tomatoes instead of smoking. That'd be great. Exactly the opposite, I'm afraid. If you eat tomato, what it does is it keeps the receptors active. It keeps you addicted. In fact, you have to stop eating tomatoes before, just before you stop smoking, and stay off tomato, and I mean all tomato product. Think about what you're eating, pizza, pasta, baked beans, tomato sauce, tomato ketchup, anything made from tomato can trigger a craving in susceptible people. So for four days, and I do only mean four days, avoid tomato products, and you will find it makes a difference, like our taxi driver in the first video you may remember. So that's one example. Tomatoes are part of a family which does include other foods. I'm not going to scare you with what they are because to be honest, it's really only tomatoes that seems to cause a problem. I do hope you now know more about your problem. You understand better why you can't stop, what to do about it. You're more than welcome to go to our website, call us, phone numbers on the site. One of us could even be me. Hey, you might get lucky. <laughs> and um, we'll have a chat with you because we are there to help. So best of luck to you. Bye for now.